Good morning. It's great to see all of you here in the sanctuary and welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online. Uh, we're so glad to be together on this morning. This summer, our theme is our one wild and precious life. And as we emerge from uh, this year of pandemic and begin to think about taking off our, our masks and uh, re-entering, this is an opportunity for us to think about our lives and the wildness and the preciousness of them and what we intend to do with them from here on out. So we're going to be doing that a little bit this morning uh, for our message. The staff is going to be reflecting on what this last year has been like for us and for our congregation. And we'll be celebrating um, and giving thanks for the ways that we've made it through this year. There's much to be thankful for, even as there's much to grieve. So uh, we also this morning are going to have a baptism, so we're excited about that and the sense of new life and life continuing to move forward and, and welcoming more and more into um, our community. So let us take a moment as we begin worship this morning and take a deep breath to go from getting here to being here, whatever that is, whether you drove here or whether you've just walked from your kitchen to your couch, take a deep breath and be present in this moment. Grateful for the God who is with us and who holds us and who we worship together. teaches us to share our lives with the world. Jesus, come. 
Good morning, everybody. Let's place our hands on our hearts, acknowledging how we cherish all the children we know and love here today and beyond this sanctuary. Today, it is with big love and deep intentionality that we slow our breath and soften our hearts as we prepare to welcome baby Charlie into the grace of this community. May you know you are loved just as God created you. Arm in arm, we will grow in love and show love to the world. In baptism, we celebrate that we belong to God. The joy of baptizing a child is declaring that before we do anything, before we get an A on a test, before we get our first job, before we even step onto a school campus, we are loved just as we are. So today we have the opportunity to baptize Charlie. So I'd like to invite him to come up with his parents and his godparents. Parents are Elliot and Elizabeth and godparents Andrew and Claire. So inside this baptismal font, we have water, just plain old water. But water is so important to us. We drink water. We take baths with water, we use water to uh, water our plants, we need water in order to eat. Water is so important. And so Charlie, today I'm going to use this water to baptize you. And when we do that, we're going to remember how God, God is like water in our lives. <laughs> God washes us inside and helps us, as we sang, dip in that fountain and get what we need to live our lives. <laughs> and water helps us, uh, and God helps us to... <laughs> gives us drinks when we are thirsty and it's okay if your mom's mask is off <laughs> i've got mine on so and god is with us when we are tired and gives us the refreshment and the rest that we need so it's my deep joy to present dexter charles tight to be baptized elliot and elizabeth do you desire that charlie be baptized and relying on God's grace, do you promise to live your faith in Jesus Christ and to teach that faith to Charlie? We do. Baptism isn't just about this private little party we're having up here. It's about all of us. It's about being a community together. And so this is an invitation for us to remember that our faith is not for us alone. It invites us into community to love and to care for each other particularly the children that are a part of our community. So here's a question for all of you. Do you promise to love and support Charlie, to follow Christ, and to be a faithful participant in Christ's community? If so, say, we do. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this water in which you nourish and sustain all things. Send your spirit now to move through it, that it would be a source of deliverance, rebirth, cleansing, and promise of your love, and that it would once again renew our love and faithfulness. To you be all praise, God and community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Charlie, you ready? Dexter Charles Wright, I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> in the name of the Son, <laughs> and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Want to hold the shell? 
the shell is a symbol, ancient symbol, nope, of <laughs> baptism. You can have it later. <laughs> like Moana, yes. <laughs> An ancient symbol of baptism, reminding us of God's love as well. Let's pray for Charlie. Oh God, hold Charlie in your hands. May he grow in wisdom and understanding, knowing and loving you, and experiencing the joy of living in your presence in this life and the next. Amen. Joni Cropper is an elder at our church and reminds us also that our journey is not ours alone. So many people around the world are here to support you, Charlie, especially in this church. And the church is a great place to find those people. So, Joni. Thank you. We're going to walk up here so everyone can get a good look at Charlie. And um, So this is Charlie and Elliot and Elizabeth. Would you welcome them to our community? And Charlie, child of God, you belong to God and you belong to us. And we belong to you. <laughs> Amen. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. now we'll uh, pass the peace to each other. So um, this morning, I just invite you to stand up and maybe wave at somebody across the, the aisle and just catch someone's eye. And um, if you're on Zoom, you can, you can wave at each other um, in, in your Zoom rooms and um, we'll all say hello to each other. So just take a minute, look across the aisles, find a familiar face. And <laughs> Thank you. So today we're going to hear from the staff about the experiences of this last year. Um, we're going to hear what we've learned, where they are, and what's next. Um, as I read the scripture reading this morning from Psalm 20, I offer it as a prayer, a prayer for uh, gratitude for what God has done to bring us through this year and a prayer of faith for the future and for the blessings that he's going to bestow on us. So from Psalm 20, I pray that the Lord answers you whenever you are in trouble. Let the name of Jacob's God protect you. Let God send help to you from the sanctuary, support you from Zion. Let God recall your many grain offerings. Let him savor your entire burnt offering. Let God grant what is in your heart and fulfill all your plans. Then we will rejoice that you have been helped. We will fly our flags in the name of our God. Let the Lord fulfill all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed one. God answers his anointed one from his heavenly sanctuary, answering with mighty acts of salvation achieved by his strong hand. Some people trust in chariots, others in horses, but we praise the Lord's name. They will collapse and fall, but we will stand up straight and strong. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, 
for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Well, hello, everyone. It's just so amazing to be back. This is my first Sunday worshiping in the sanctuary, and um, I'm just kind of overwhelmed by giving hugs to old friends and seeing our beautiful trees, and uh, it's put me in a reflective mood, which is fitting, given what we're going to talk about today. So, um, you know, I think we've all done a lot of personal reflection this year. I know Jenny certainly talked about that a lot from the pulpit. Um, and as I prepared and reflected on what I wanted to ask you about today, I started thinking about disruption and how here in Silicon Valley, we talk about disruption a lot. It's been sort of a popular concept, especially in the last five to 10 years. Um, and usually here, I don't necessarily agree with this, but it's framed as a positive, that disruption is something that's necessary to bring about change. And we've all gone through this collective disruption that's the biggest disruption I think probably for most of us in our entire lives. And it was unwelcome and it had a lot of negative consequences, but nevertheless, um, it did bring about change and it brings the possibility of some positive moving forward. And so um, as I talk and um, dialogue with you today, what I really wanna focus on is the disruption and the positive change in our organization and Valley Presbyterian Church and what it means for us moving forward. Um, so I'm gonna start by talking with you a little bit about the present state of things and then we're gonna talk about, we're gonna look back a little bit and talk about March 2020 and what that was like for all of you. And then we're gonna talk about the future and what we see moving forward. So Jenny, I'm gonna start with you. I know in the last few weeks, you've talked a bit about what it feels like to be back in the sanctuary, but I'd like you to answer that question one more time and just talk about where we're at. How, how do you think worship today is different than it was during the pandemic? Thanks, Naomi. And uh, I should say Naomi's on our session on our board. And so she's had a lot of long nights this year with <laughs> um, session discussing everything from masks or no masks or um, closing to, um, you know, finances and all of that. So I'm really grateful for you hosting this today. And um, well, I think right now we're you know, there's a sense, there, a, new, a new kind of adrenaline. There was the adrenaline of everything shutting down a year ago, and then there's this new adrenaline of being back and, and being in worship and considering how we work with our new technology, but also remain true to who we are, which is authentic and wanting to be connective and community-based. So um, we're excited about that. It also means that there's a little more chaos sometimes. <laughs> Then rolling out of bed and I'll keep looking at you, keep getting on to Zoom, but um, we're really excited, I think, overall to be back. Great. And um, Raf, what is your vision for music during this transitional time when we, you know, at least until the next few weeks, we can't take off our masks and sing and things are different. Things are very, very different. Um, you still can hum. So if you are in the congregation, you are all invited to hum. And for people who are watching this online, which is a large number of people, sing your hearts out. Um, the words and text are there. So um, we are able to do some of that. Um, we have had to sh uh, shift some stuff. Uh, we have, uh, you may have noticed, there's more microphones so that we can get the message out. And there's also more guests. You're gonna see more guest musicians. Barbara's been organizing that. You may have noticed Barbara's playing a whole lot of instruments mm -hmm. to kind of fill out the musical tapestry. And we are, uh, we have been meeting with bells. So that'll be coming up. So we might can do. Great, thank you. And then Carrie, can you talk to us a little bit about how we're serving students? And for those of us who don't have kids, we, I really don't know, even though I'm on session, you know? So just tell us, how are you, how are you um, handling children's <coughs> ministry right now? 
I think the focus is on welcoming children of all ages back into the community as they and their families are ready and really trying to rekindle friendships between children of all ages, trying to give opportunities to reconnect and re, um, reflect in the beautiful redwood grove as we continue to be outdoors and introduce some simple spiritual practices that everybody can engage in. The welcome baskets in the cupboard at the beginning are a visible reminder to everybody that children and families are welcome amongst us um, and we hope to engage the little ones in that way as well as they come back with their mums and dads. Thanks so much, Kerry. Jenny, um, I wanted to ask you how you think the disruption of the last year has changed us. You know, from your conversations with members of the community, where do you think we are and what do you think our members need at this moment in time? Well, I think we've discovered a lot of resilience this year as a congregation. I also sense a deep sense of creativity and adventure as we've had to we've had to change so quickly and we found we could do more than we thought we could. Um, and so I think there's also been some deepening of relationships uh, and as people have seen each other's faces on Zoom, um, we've had some incredible small group experiences. I think there's been a real deepening of, of friendships. Uh, you know, but that's just, that said that I don't think that everyone is in the, that place. And there's been people who couldn't stand one more Zoom call or at the end of the week. And we understand that people will slowly be able, will be coming back as we're back in person. And so, so you know, it's, I think, a mixed bag. I think right now, though, I know what I need and what I'm hearing from others is just a sense of simplicity and reconnection and not filling up with a lot of activities, but really focusing on getting back together on Sunday mornings and making that um, a good experience and also giving people space to reconnect with their families and their lives. So that's what we're focused on this summer. Great. And Raph, I wonder how the last year changed your ideas or your philosophy about worship. Um, let's see. So. I have always, this church has always been doing Sunday worship really, really well. It's kind of been the core of what made this church work for so many years. And to have it blow up and have us all move online um, really changed my idea of how worship should get done and who it should reach. Um, it was amazing that we actually had more people showing up on Sundays online than normal. And that shows the resilience of the community and resilience of our message that we didn't have to show up and be sitting in the pew to worship together. And so it's really kind of shifted uh, some of my thoughts on that. Not that I don't love being here, <laughs> but it, it's been really remarkable to see how that can work, um, whether you're here or at home. Great, thank you. And Carrie, I know that the pandemic has been particularly hard on kids and the isolation and all of that. And I just wonder what you've seen. Um, what do you think that the impact has been on our students and how do you think they're doing? Um, I have seen that it has been very isolating for students. I've seen that it has created incredible new challenges for some of them. And for some of them also, uh, they have thrived on the opportunity to learn independently at home. Obviously, there's been a lot of Zoom fatigue. And what I've noticed in particular in this community is a lot of resilience, a lot of capacity to find new ways of um, connecting with friends and one another and really a desire to support one another and I'm grateful to say that I think the students that I've been working with have felt supported by their family and teachers to a large extent. So I've seen both sides of it. It's been quite inspiring to see their responses. Great, thank you. Well, now let's pivot and go back a little bit to March 2020. And when I think about that time in the church, I was fairly new on session 
and I'm one of the people who's been on the base camp committee and we were working on a strategic plan. In fact, one of the last in-person meetings I attended was a meeting to kind of finalize our strategic plan. Little did we know how much everything was gonna change. Um, but ironically, I think that the whole base camp concept that we've been working on turned out to be incredibly fitting because I think we all needed our base camp here to keep us going through the next year. But um, everything changed in just a few days. We were all getting ready to go to the women's retreat. And I think right up until a day or two beforehand, it was still on. And then things changed like that. And I would really like, um, Jenny, for you to tell us a little bit what those first few days and weeks were like and how you coped with that. I'll never forget walking around the office and kind of looking at Roth and looking at others and looking at Carrie and saying, what are we going to do? And all of a sudden I realized I, I mean, with session, but it was really on me to make that call. And as I was, and throughout the pandemic, those first few months, it was like, well, you, you could spend all of your time thinking about, are we going to be open next week or next week or next week? And so we began with session to make some markers like no we're not going to open until after easter because that gave us space to really plan to do online well okay now we're not going to open till the end of the summer okay now it looks like it's going to be christmas but um having a group of people to talk about that and also having a church that was committed not to just living living a news item to news item but to say actually how do we allow ourselves the space to be together and to be engaged in worship and community in this time. And sometimes that meant projecting out a little earlier than other people did, but um, I was really grateful for the support. Um, we pretty quickly determined that was the focus um, rather than spending all our time spinning on decisions. And I think a lot of us have actually forgotten, including me, Remind us, what did we do that very first Sunday after the <laughs> shutdown? Well, I did. I knew you were going to ask this, so I went back and looked at a newsletter that I sent, I think, on Wednesday, which I said, where I said, we're going to still worship. <laughs> and I remember agonizing and not sleeping then for a couple nights and then having to come back on Friday and say it was March 15th. That, and so I just came in here, I think, with my iPhone, and um, Barbary maybe sent something in, and uh, then I reached out to Maria in Scotland and Nathan in um, Atlanta, and so some of our college students asked them to do readings. So that was kind of cool. It was like everyone from all over the world was experiencing this, and we could be together um, on that first Sunday. But it was very simple. The sermons were super short because I knew my attention span was pretty short, and I figured everyone else's was at that time. And was that a Zoom meeting or was it a recording? Uh, it was a recording. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was a recording. And then the Zoom, when did the Zoom church start? So we tried um, over the year, we began to try to hit a lot of different levels online. So you could, you could just take it in on your own on YouTube anytime if that was what worked for you. Um, you could come in on Zoom and experience community, and then every other month or so, we'd have drive-through communion for people who just didn't want any of that but wanted to see somebody. Um, and then we also had worship at home kits uh, that people received or picked up, or we were mailed out so you'd have something tangible in your hands at home. That, so we tried to hit as many levels as we could to connect with people. And it was interesting. Sometimes people I had no idea were tracking would show up at drive through communion, and they were following along. So, um, so I think I feel good about, you know, those decisions, as hard as they were, and just exhausting as it was at times. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I actually think that you all did such a great job that you probably made it look way easier than it was on the back end. So that's kind of what I want to talk to Raf about, because speaking of disruption, you really couldn't do anything the way you've always done it in your entire time here. So, you know, what was really hard and challenging about that? And how did you figure it out? Well, I think the hardest part was stopping because in, with the music program, we were just about to do the Foray Requiem and with choir and full orchestra. And that was gonna dovetail directly into Palm Sunday and Easter. So those are the, like the high points. And so we had all these plans. And in early March, we we're just wondering, are we overreacting? And clearly we weren't <laughs> overreacting by stopping everything. 
And so, but it was a real letdown from all the effort that people had been uh, working on for that. So the stopping was the trickiest part. Mm -hmm. um, from there, we, uh, people were just troopers and we moved directly into virtual choirs and we did virtual handbells and then we did car choirs because actually with an FM transmitter. So, um, so people shifted really, really well, but there was a bit of a loss, mm -hmm. feeling of loss mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, and what was going on, I'm kind of adding this in, but I know you can answer it. What was going on behind the scenes? Like how much time were you and Jenny having to spend planning and you know on the phone and on Zoom? And Jenny, how much time were you spending doing research with other churches? A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. We were all spending a lot of time um, because you know, all of a sudden we had to learn video editing and Barbary was amazing. She learned, she did so much music editing. Um, so uh, she's not sitting here with us, but she was incredible. And um, so we were all had, we all had a high learning curve really fast. And it was, the stress was that everything that came out had to come through the computer. So the amount of time to edit and send out the Mindful Monday and we had something on Friday and we would have the Wednesday newsletter and then the Sunday and then the video, so it was, you know, there was a lot of weeks of seven days a week, um, you know, editing videos, trying to get things together. And um, so it was, it was quite, quite a bit of work, but um, we also, you know, we all work together pretty well and we're, um, you know, we call each other and on Saturdays and say, hey, do you got this? And, um, you know, so there was a sense of, of all of us being in it together. Um, and so I'm really grateful for that. Um, and then. Carrie was working to coordinate the kids on some of those amazing videos and our pageant. And so, um, yeah, thank you for all of that. I mean, as the receiver of it, I have to say it was really wonderful. And Sunday mornings really kept us going in our family. Mm -hmm. um, so Carrie, I guess I have a couple questions for you about looking back. What are you going to be really glad to give up? And then I, you mentioned inspiration. I don't know if there's a particular story that comes to mind, but something um, with the children's ministry that really inspired you? Well, it's, it's like a, an irony. I'll be glad to give up the Zoom, but those kids kept coming to Zoom. They stayed on after confirmation. We had to finish that on Zoom. And they wrote, uh, you know, their mini sermons, which everybody knows about. They, you know, they, they came along and they did things. And... It was just inspiring that despite the fact that they were exhausted, they kept showing up. And I think what we realised was, from what they said, that they were getting something different, being together, different than the school burnout and so on. And I think what we've learned is that this is, you know, of course, we want to reach kids in all sorts of ways. And maybe the Zoom is a way to connect with them on one level once everything goes back to normal, and as well as doing other things relationally and in person. And I think what inspired me the most was at the end of it, we were, um, you know, we'd done Youth Sunday stuff, we'd done videos, we'd done our Zoom, and we decided to have a pause for applause. And it was I Joe's birthday. And we were pausing for the applause of everything that everybody had contributed to Youth Sunday. And I had no idea if anybody was going to come. Teenagers don't always reply. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked into the little truck centre and they came on their bikes and they came, dribbled and drabbled, and we had eight kids sitting around outside, eating together, laughing together. Um, joining in celebrating Ijo and one another. And that was like, wow, for me. That's amazing, thank you. Well, as we close, I'm gonna e ask each of you the same few questions about your vision of the future. And I'm doing that because I know you're each gonna have a different answer, but um, I wonder how the disruption of the last year will affect our ministry moving forward? And do you think we need to serve people differently? How does it change things? So I'll switch things up. I'll start with you this time, Raf. I think um, we really appreciate w how important it is to be uh, outward looking. Um, we have a really diverse uh, group. When you look geographically, we're not all in Portola Valley. We're actually throughout the Bay Area and uh, many people are outside of the Bay Area and that we can 
connect to them and stay connected. And that's just so uh, vitally important. I think it's something, you know, you're gonna come here or not come here, but we'll be here. But I think we really have to reach out uh, more effectively to the whole community. Carrie, sorry. Um, I think we are where we left off. It was really exciting where we were, planning to be a base camp, creating a more loving world. We were thinking about offering parenting programs. We were thinking of how we could attract new families into our midst. We were thinking of how we could meet the needs of youth and families in all sorts of diverse ways. And I think that vision is still there and we have more creativity and resilience to make it happen and we hope that um, this place will, will open up to be that. And I think just a little story to finish, you know, I was standing outside and uh, walking with, with Thomas after a Sunday session and Barb Hansen came up to Thomas and she said, Thomas, you don't know me, but I know you. I've seen you on Zoom and I love your beautiful prayers. And Thomas's face lit up and I thought, this is who we are as a community and who I think um, we want to continue to be for the children in our midst to grow this, uh, to grow forward, to be seen, to be known, to be, to be loved. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about, uh, about that going forward. That's a wonderful story, and I think it really is interesting how in some ways we got to know each other better on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Jenny, how do you think this will change our ministry? Yeah. Well, I think, um, you're right, disruption is disruptive, um, and this was a pretty big one. But I also think this is the opportunity of a lifetime um, to reboot an organization and a 60-year-old church and a community in a, and to really look at everything we're doing and say, you know, well, is that how we really want to do it? Or what else is out there for us? And um, because we were so clear on on what our mission was and where we were headed it gives us we already know what where the arrows we want the arrows to point and so this is an amazing opportunity for us to to reconsider who we are but also to remember that some things have stayed the same as carrie said we know who we are and um, one of the reasons i became a pastor was because i thought the church needed a little disruption um, i didn't think it needed this big of a disruption <laughs> But there is an excitement that, like, wow, we have this opportunity, and I believe so deeply in this place, in the ways that it opens our souls, and the the the, uh, the con continuity of of welcome for people across the generations, for what's happening within us, and it's been so exciting to see that blossom in new ways this year. Also, you know, I wouldn't want to miss any chance to say. Um, how our anti-racism work has developed this year. There's been uh, the fact that the Earth Care team has taken off. And also we had in this over 100 people involved in small groups, which has never happened um, before. So there's been incredible things that have come of this year, um, some a little hidden and invisible, but I think all of those are really good signs as we move forward that we're more deeply connected we're getting a sense of how we're called to be in this world, and we, we care about this place and want this place to be a healing and whole-making um, whole space. So. Yeah, it's interesting. I mentioned earlier that one of the last meetings I went to was a base camp planning meeting, and we reconvened recently and sort of took another look at everything. And it really is so, there is so much richness here and so much that we can share with the world. And for all the disruption, I don't think it changed our vision at all. Mm -hmm. It changed some of our practices, but not our vision of really bringing people into healthier lifestyles, into stronger relationships, into you know more effective service. So I'm really excited too um, about where we're going, and you know it's really been a pleasure to be in session. But I do want to wrap up with just one 
last question, and I think you've all sort of expressed this, but maybe you could just recap each one of you, starting with Carrie, what you're most excited about moving forward. I think it is somehow that blending of who we are and who we can become as we go forward. When I stay, you know, st stood up and I say the blessing, I want the children to be seen. And that, that blessing is a legacy to Kathy Paniaga. It's part of what she gifted our children. And um, I'm excited about just bringing them into the focus of the community. As Jenny said, uh, Barbary and I have worked together to, you know, create videos of the children. Thomas prays, Avery sings, other kids do other things, and giving them opportunities to really um, to grow in faith and also to be really supported and connected and in, within our community, because I think that's really what we, we have to, to offer young people. And I am excited about um, just creating new things. Like I said, you know, the basket so families really feel that this is a place where they belong um, and opportunities for the godly play to reopen with um, a team of, of people that want to support kids. There's a lot of uh, beautiful refurbishing being done to enhance those rooms, the nurseries, and creating beautiful spaces that uh, children want to be a part of. And I think mostly just offering opportunities for each of us to walk hand in hand with the kids so that they grow in faith and confidence. How about Ralph? And then I'm going to let Jenny wrap it up. I'll just say, make music in person. <laughs> um, we actually, the choir can only meet in small groups. Um, you'll see small groups, but we're going to in September, hopefully, if everything goes well, that we'll be able to meet up again and start up. Um, we've been doing, just when we met in car choir, it was amazing to see each other through the windshields and to sing and hear each other and be in the same parking lot. Um, and uh, even better was to be, uh, see the bell choir, which the bell choir has begun to meet and they will be performing or offering some music. And it is just such a joy to make music in person together. This Sunday, or this morning, um, in a few minutes, our final hymn is one that I picked and asked for this morning, which is one of my favorite hymns, Praise the Lord, the Almighty. And um, I love the, uh, the line in that of, have you not seen how your desires have been, have been met in what God has ordained? And so I think um, I have just been celebrating the faithfulness of God this year with us to carry us all of the ways that we think, things that we've been surprised about. And I think that's what I'm most excited about is we don't know what's next, but I, I do have this sense that we have been carried and called and there's still so much more ahead. And I'm, I'm so excited to see what unfolds. Um, as I was thinking about this morning, I was thinking about that African um, phrase of, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I thought, this year has had a lot of going alone, I think, for all of us. We had to go fast. We had to make a choice. We had to, you know, it, it was, uh, I had to learn MailChimp and how to video edit immediately um, because there was no one else to do it. So... Um, there was some going alone this year, and we had to do that. But as, I, as we turn our, our vision into what's ahead, I really want to lean into the last part of that and to go forward together um, and to, to go forward in a way that we're all feeling each other's presence. And I think that's been true. But I, I want to start us to start leaning more on that as we come out of this time of isolation. Well, great. Well, thank you for a great dialogue this morning. It was really fun. Thank you. So we're just going to stay here for a minute and um, have a moment of prayer for our congregation. And then I'll uh, end with the Lord's Prayer. You all are welcome to join me. So would you pray with me? God, we do thank you for your faithfulness to us. It hasn't been easy. There's been dark moments of wondering what's going on. We still are not sure 
of where you are leading or what's ahead. And yet I am so grateful for the ways that we have seen you show up in faithful ways from big things like beautiful Christmas pageants online and Easter services to the tiniest things in terms of phone calls and the moments in our day where we have turned to you and found the strength that we needed to take the next steps. You have carried us as a church community this year and as individuals. You have taken us out into the world even when we were stuck at home and we are so grateful to you. We pray that we would continue to be reliant on you as we move forward. I'm so grateful for Carrie and Roth and Barbary and all of the staff, for Rico and Kyla and those who have sung with us, for the many people that have come to help carry the load this year in volunteers and our deacons and our session. Thank you for each one. Thank you for the privilege of not being alone, even in this difficult time. We pray that that you would be more and more evident in who we are, that this place would shine with the light of Christ, extending a welcome to all, letting everyone know that they are loved deeply by you and called to build a more loving world. We know that that we can't do that on our own. So we are so reliant on you and your strength and in following the footsteps of your son who taught us to pray this prayer. Our God who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Naomi. Then these next few moments, uh, we'll receive today's offering. You can do that online. There's information in your bulletin or on the screen. There's also offering plates here for those of you um, that may want to give as you leave. And now we'll enjoy our amazing bell choir.
from this place today may you be filled with that sense of gratitude for the faithfulness of God and deep trust for all that is to come peace be with you amen